This week, we're going to continue working to make our PDF report of buoy data. Welcome to another MapPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to pick up where we left off using the FPDF package to create a PDF report of buoy data. So last week, we just made a simple report that said, hello, MetPy, and had a header and a footer. And we did that by defining this class PDF that inherited from FPDF and declaring these header and footer methods. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up our notebook here some. We still need our import. This is where we were doing our hello MetPy example, so we don't need that cell. And then this is our header footer. We need that. And I'm gonna insert a cell here. And we're gonna go ahead and start adding some code for this week. And let's give ourselves a couple of cells here. All right. So the first thing that we need to do is get some data from the National Data Buoy Center to actually work with and create our PDF report. We've talked about this in previous MetPy Mondays, so I'm not going to go into great depth on it, but we're going to use Siphon's Simple Web Service. So from Siphon.SimpleWebService, National Data Buoy Center, we're going to import the National Data Buoy Center class. And then from date time, we're going to import date time as well. Now we could do several different reports. Uh, I'm going to specifically do one based on the latest observations. So we're going to get the statistics on all of the observations across the network right now. And of course you could do historical reports or buoy by buoy reports, but this is just one that will give us some nice statistics to look at and we'll be able to make some maps and insert those into the report. So the NDBC class has a latest observations method that's going to return a data frame. And we can look at the columns of that data frame just to see what data we get back. And we get station, lat lawn, wind direction, speed, gust, wave height, dominant wave period, average wave period, dominant wave direction, pressure, pressure tendency air temperature, water temperature, dew point visibility, water level above mean, and time of observation. Now, not all of these are valid for every buoy. Some buoys may not have the full meteorological package. Some may not have the water sensing package. Some may or may not report the wave height or wave period. But we're going to do what we can statistically. And to remind ourselves, df.describe is a really handy method in pandas. And it's going to tell us things like how many, so the count, uh, mean, standard deviation, minimum, quartiles, maximum, of each of the data series or columns in our data frame there are. So for example, we can see that there are 767 latitudes and longitudes. That's telling us that that's how many buoys there are. Uh, there's only 532 with wind direction, 556 with wind speed. Uh, if we start looking at wave parameters, we see that much many fewer buoys have those, but quite a few do have things like pressure. And we can keep scrolling over here and see that a lot have water temperature, but not many have dew point and very few have visibility. Okay, so now we're ready to create our report. We're going to keep our inst instantiation of the PDF object, and we're going to add a page. Uh, we're going to be using our page numbering, just like we did last week, and we're going to be setting a font. So that's all good. But instead of saying, hello, MetPy, let's put this with something more useful, like the date and time that the reporter created. So date time, UTC now. And then I'm going to use a colon and specify a formatting of year dash month dash day space hour minute. That ought to look good on our report. 
and we don't need to specify any borders or anything like that. We'll keep the PDF output call. That is what's going to write our report to a file, but we don't need that until the very end of this cell. So what I'm going to do next is make a list of the variables that I want in my report. I'll call it report vars. My report vars are going to be wind speed. I'm doing this just because I don't want to do the report for every single variable. Maybe I want to tailor my report some to what I'm interested in. Uh, for example, I don't need the minimum, maximum, and median uh, or mean three hour pressure tendency. I'm not particularly interested in that, but I am interested in some of these other parameters. Dominant wave period, the average wave period, dominant wave direction, pressure, air temperature, water temperature, dew point, visibility, even though a lot of stations don't have visibility, I do think it's interesting to see what the visibilities are uh, around the, the oceans of the northern hemisphere. And water level above mean. So we'll go with that as our set of report variables. I'm going to save as df describe the output from df describe so we can get our statistics that way. I'm going to set the font to be Arial, bold, 12 point font. I'm going to specify a variable called Y height, which is going to be the height of my cells. And this just lets me change, if I change the font size, I can change this one Y height variable and all of my cell heights change. And now remember, there's going to be some ways that we can improve this code, uh, fewer copy paste of lines and so on. But right now we're just trying to get a report working. We'll come back and make our code more concise later. This is how real software engineers work every day. We don't just write the perfect code to start with. In fact, we spend most of our time refactoring. So what I'm doing now is I'm setting my XY position and I'm creating a cell that will pad me over uh, in X, 25 points or millimeters or whatever your units are set to, but millimeters here. I'm gonna use pdf.cell 60, my Y height, so that's my X and Y. Variable is what's going to be displayed in that cell. And I want a border because I'm trying to make a table. Next one's going to be mean. And these are going to be a little bit narrower in X, as you can see. I don't need as much space for the mean, the minimum, and so on. And as we're typing this, we say, gee, I'm typing the same thing a lot of times. Uh, so I'm flagging this in my mind, or maybe even with a comment to myself that this seems like something that I should come back and improve. Okay, our standard deviation. And I'm specifying ln equals one here, which means I want to go back down to the next line in my document here. That's where I want to position my cursor. Okay, now that we've made our header row, of our table. I'm going to call set font again. I want to keep Arial, but I want regular, which remember is empty string. That's not R and 12 points. I'm not going to bold my data. And then now we're just going to loop for var in our report vars. So for each of those variables, we're going to move our cells over by using this pdf.cell call. This is all going to look the same. The variable name var, we want a border p 
pdf.cell 20 y height and now we're going to have to get into that df describe variable and we want to get the describe data series for our particular variable name and from that we want to get the mean and this is going to be something that goes out to some high precision that we probably don't want in our report so we can call round round on df.main I'm just gonna round to the first decimal place and we're expecting text in our cell in fact if you try to pass numbers sometimes it gives you some pretty obscure errors so we want to make sure that this is a string so we've got some nested calls going on there and border equals one now I know that I'm going to do the same exact line for my min, my max, and my standard deviation. Min, max, standard deviation. And that when I'm done, I wanna go back to the beginning of the next line. Now, the fact that I just copy and pasted those lines again should make me a little uneasy that maybe I need to be doing some optimization of my coding here. But if we look at this report, we see that we were actually able to create a report that's got our date time there at the top. We made a table with bolded headers and we then pulled data from a df.describe of a data frame. So in just a few tens of lines of Python, We've now got a code that could run every hour and generate this report for us or email it to us or check for certain parameters being out of range and color cells by them. This is a great QC report. This is a great way to make reports for viewing model output uh, or even just looking at a summary of your region every day. So I hope that you found this useful. Next week, we'll continue to add to this by doing some optimization and looking at inserting images that we create with Matplotlib. Hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's Pie Monday.